Welcome to the Budget Mom YouTube channel. I'm Kamiko Love from thebudgetmom.com and today we are doing something really fun. So usually Ryan and I come on it every single month and we share our budget recaps where we essentially go over where did our dollars go for the previous month. In this video, I'm actually coming on YouTube to go over my budget creation. So what does creating my paycheck budget using the budget by paycheck method look like in my life? Today is February 1st, and that's the day we're filming this video. So we're gonna be going over how I created and what I do, the steps that I take to create my paycheck budget, and we're gonna be looking at my February budget. So here is what that looks like. So anytime I create a new budget, it also correlates me closing out my previous budget. So I'm a paycheck budgeter, which means I create a budget every single time I get paid, which is currently just once a month on the first. So when I create, say, my new budget for February, it also is dependent on closing out my budget for January. Why? Because I need to know how much unused cash I'm gonna be rolling from January into February. Okay, that's gonna play a role in my starting balance for February in my budget and with my spending, as well as my starting balance from going in from January to February. Now, I track from the first of the month to the last day of the month. So that all plays a role in creating my February budget. So a little backstory, when I create my budget for a new tracking period. I like to do that in advance. So we're talking about a week, a couple of weeks in advance. As we get closer to me utilizing that budget, I call finalizing it. It's where I know or have a good estimate on my income, on my expenses. So I like to like I like to create a rough draft for my paycheck budgets and then as I get closer to that time, I tweak and perfect that into a finalized budget. So let's look at how I'm going to create my February budget. So today we're not gonna only just go over creating my budget, we're also gonna go over what I do when I start a new tracking period. So this is my February budget, or I'm using the paycheck bill tracker inside the budget by paycheck workbook. The first thing I do is I list out all of different inflows coming into my account. So I have my paycheck that I receive every month, I have Chris's income that he uh, reimburses me for paying the bills for that month. So he already, I'm planning on that. I have money, the $55 that was unused in my pet cash envelope. I'm rolling into my February budget to spend. That's the $55. And then I'm also using savings this month. I'm using my Valentine's Day sinking fund savings. I plan on spending this cash this month for Valentine's Day. So I'm gonna put it right here in my total inflows for the month of money that I have to spend. That makes my total inflows 5835. The next thing that I do when creating my budget, so I already have my estimated income done. My estimated income is always based on the worst case scenario or the least amount I expect to receive for that budget. The next thing I do is I want to write down all of my different fixed expenses. These are bills that I have to pay, financial obligations that I have to pay month after month after month. Now, usually fixed expenses land on the same day, meaning they're due the same day, roughly for the same amount. There are some fixed expenses that fluctuate month to month, like your utility bill. So I list out all of my different bills that I have to pay for that month, their due date, and my estimated amount that I have to pay. Now, most of these, like I said, fixed expenses don't fluctuate all that much, so they're relatively around the same price. My utility bill, which right here, as you see, for a Vista, now I'm on comfort level billing, which means my payment is the same every month, but not everyone is on that. So if you have a utility bill that fluctuates, your fixed expenses should always be written down with the highest amount you expect to receive. When you are creating a paycheck budget or any budget, you're going to plan to expect for the worst, but hope for the best. So 
If you plan on the worst case scenario with your bills, which means you're planning for the highest you think you're going to be, and you're budgeting your income for the lowest amount you expect to be, you're really setting yourself up for success, less of a chance for you to not have money to cover your financial obligations. So income that you write, your estimated income is based on the least amount you expect them it to be. Your fixed expenses should be estimated based on the highest you think that bill will be. So here I have all of my fixed expenses. Down here, the bill total is all of these added up. If I subtract it for my income, my estimated income, I'm left with 3108. The next thing I have to take care of in my life is variable expenses. Now for my variable spending, I use the cash envelope method, which I have an area on the paycheck bill tracker that is dedicated to my envelopes. I currently have seven different variable spending categories. In the month of February, I have eight because I'm including spending for Valentine's Day. So I have food, fun, gas, beauty, miscellaneous, household pets, and Valentine's Day. With my gas, I am going cashless, which means I am leaving the amount I set aside for that category in my checking account. I'm gonna be using my debit card. And gas is the only category in my budget that I'm going to be using my debit card for variable spending. Here you can also see that I have a pet budget of 105. Now I usually budget $50 in cash every month for my pets category, but I rolled over that $55 from January. So with the rollover of $55 and the $50 I usually budget for, I have a new budget limit for my pets category at 105. And then I also plan on spending that 180 I save for my sinking fund savings for Valentine's Day. Now, all of my variable spending categories here equal 1190. If you subtract that from the 3108 that we got right here, we're left with 1918. So after you take care of your fixed obligation, your variable spending, you have money left over. I like to use that for preparing for my future. Now, this might look very different for you if you have debt. I'm debt free. So preparing for my future, saving and investing are my priorities. So I cover sinking funds first. Now in the booklets for the budget by paycheck method, the budget goes on to the next spread. Maybe your priority is to pay off debt. Will any extra income that you have, you would put right here in the extra debt area, the debt payment you would be making, or maybe extra savings like I have listed here. So the money you have left over after paying your fixed expenses and variable spending really does depend on your personal situation and your own financial goals. This is simply how I choose and where I, play, where I want to place my money to best benefit my financial goals. So I list out any sinking funds or savings goals, money that I'm throwing towards different things down here in my sinking funds. Currently, and we're gonna be stuffing my envelopes and my sinking funds here in a minute, but I wanna explain the budget. I'm saving for Christmas, James birthday, Chris's birthday, Costco, and my son's sports. They're sinking funds that I'm saving for in cash. Everything highlighted in pink are sinking funds that I have at separate savings accounts at my credit union, which means I do not hold that cash. I leave it in a savings account. I'm gonna make online transfers into these savings accounts for when I'm doing my budget. So when I get paid and I actually have this income sitting in my checking account, I'm then going to make the, one of the first things I do before any of my bills come out, I spend any of my cash spending, I'm going to make those online transfers. It's called paying yourself first. And then if there's any leftover money in my budget, I like to throw it to extra savings, which is my landscaping. Your budget, I like to utilize and use a zero-based budget, meaning income minus all of these different expenses should equal zero. Now you can see that in one of my bills here is for my cushion. I like to set aside $280 every paycheck for my checking account cushion. 
And the reason I do it month after month with every single paycheck budget is because sometimes I use that cushion. Is it always $280 that I use? No. And if it grows up and past the thousand dollars in my checking account, then I'll decide at that time what to do with that extra money. But at least if I budget my cushion as like a normal bill, then I'm ensuring that at least I am tucking away money every single time I get paid to sit in my checking account as a checking account cushion. One of the number one fears I hear about zero based budget is Miko. I get real nervous for putting my bills on auto pay because I'm bringing down my checking account to zero every month. A zero based bid budget is income minus your expenses should be zero. Meaning zero does not mean you're spending all of your income. You can see here I'm saving some of it. I'm leaving some in a checking account cushion. A zero based budget means that every dollar has a plan. It's not necessarily being spent on goods or services. So this is the creation of my paycheck budget. Income minus fixed expenses minus my variable spending minus my financial goals, whether that's saving, investing, or paying off debt, equals zero. Now the next thing I like to do is my cash envelopes. This is part of creating my budget and getting prepared for my upcoming month. Now for you, you might be getting paid every two weeks and creating a budget every two weeks. Some of you might be doing a budget every week. For me, I do it every single time I, got paid, I get paid on the first. So here are my cash envelopes. Now I went to the bank. I use what's called the cash envelope breakdown. And this essentially is all the different budget categories that I need cash for to spend. So it's Chris, it's James's birthday, it's Chris's birthday, Costco, sports, my son's sports, food, fun, beauty, miscellaneous, household and pets. Remember, I'm saving some of my sinking funds in cash. So I need to make sure I pull out cash for those sinking funds. And I have my budget categories that I am spending cash. So those need to be listed as well. I write my budget limit or the amount of cash I wanna pull out for each category. The cash envelope breakdown allows you to choose what bill denominations work best for spending in that category. So for instance, my Christmas. I don't care if I have small or large bills. I'd rather have large bills because essentially I'm not spending this money right now. I might if I find a good deal for a Christmas present, but I'm just essentially setting it aside into a Christmas sinking fund. So I just need, let's see, so my budget that I need to pull out for Christmas, the amount I'm saving this month for Christmas is 157. So I'm gonna pull out a $100 bill, a 50, a five, and two ones. And I essentially go down and I do this throughout for all of my different things. So for my sinking funds, I just pull out the largest bills that I can. For my budget though, for my variable spending, I try to work this way, large bills to smaller bills. The reason being is because it's a lot harder to hand someone a $50 bill than it is a $10 bill. You're less likely to spend your bigger bills if you are a cash spender. Now this is something I have recognized in my life over the last nine years of being an all cash spender and budgeting my money. It's really a psychological thing that happens to us when we're dealing with physical cash. So I like to pull out the biggest bills I can unless I have a need for smaller bills in my variable spending. I put it onto what's called a cash envelope teller slip. I transfer this information, so the number of bills I need for each bill amount and then the value of each. Now I'm pulling out $1,156 in cash to stuff my cash envelopes for my budget and to save for my sinking funds. I just bring this teller slip with me to the bank, really easy. I ensure that I get the exact bills I need for my savings goals and my variable spending throughout the month or until my next paycheck, really easy. And that's, I, I'll list these down in the description of this video if you are wanting more information about my cash envelope breakdown teller slips. So that's the next step. I transfer what envelopes I need to pull out cash, what sinking funds I need to pull out cash for, and I fill out my cash envelope breakdown. So let's stuff some cash envelopes. 
So my Christmas sinking fund, that's what I have here. And I like to just put it up against the line there so I don't get mixed up. So I need a 100, a 50, a five, and two ones. So this is my Christmas sinking fund done. I just put it right there in my envelope. Today is two one and I am adding from my February pay, this is how I fill out the back of my tracker, plus 150, we did 157. So I started this period, this budget period with 437. If I add the 157 to that, I have a new balance of 594. So I also have this tracker on the front of each one of my sinking funds envelopes. And this just allows me to see in a visual way how close I am to reaching my savings goals. So I have 594 inside my Christmas sinking fund, which means I'm gonna color in my chart up until that amount. And now I can see I am getting close to the halfway point for my Christmas sinking fund. And I just, this is just a fun visual way, keep me motivated for me to see my progress when I'm saving for my sinking fund. So that one is done. Now the next thing I move over to James's B-Day. So James's birthday. So I have James's little sinking fund here. This I like to save this in cash. So I, once again, I put it right up there and I'm gonna, so on this one I need two twenties and two ones. So $42 is what I'm saving this month for my son's birthday. I'm gonna stick it in that envelope. And today is two one from my February pay. I'm adding $42. Which gives me a new balance of 234 for his birthday. Now you might be asking, how did I come up with these amounts to save for these sinking funds? So what I do is I create a goal amount. So for instance, Christmas, I have a goal to save $2,000 by November. So I took 2,000 and then I divided, I would divide that by 11. That's what how much I would need to save every single month in the year 2021 to reach my goal. However, I had some money already saved from last year. I always reanalyze this goal every time I create a budget. How much do I want to save? How much do I already have saved and how long do I have to save? So you would take your goal amount, subtract it by the amount you already have to save, take that amount, divide it by the number of months you have to save, and that's going to give you what you need to save every single month. So I know to reach my $2,000 goal for Christmas by November of this year, I need to save 157 this month. So that's how I come up with those numbers. So James's birthday, I'm at 234. So now I look at my tracker and I said, yes, I can fill up all the way up to that line. So I'm just gonna take my marker and I'm going to Okay, so now that my sinking funds are done, I'm going to fill my, my cash envelopes. So my cash envelopes are here in my wallet. Now I don't carry my cash envelopes with me every day, only the ones that I need, but for the purpose of this video and filling them, stuffing them, I have them here in my wallet. So food, I need 450. All right, the next one I'm going to is fun, which is a 75. Beauty is 150. So all of my cash envelopes have been stuffed. So I filled my pets envelopes, my household envelope, my miscellaneous envelope, my beauty envelope, my fun, and my food envelope. For gas, because I'm not using a cash envelope, I'm spending money in my checking account. Remember, I'm leaving this 150 in my checking account to spend on gas. To ensure that I don't overspend in that category, I like to use just a normal spending tracker that looks like this. 
And as I spend in this category, I write down and I keep an updated balance of how much I have to spend in that category. Essentially, this is the cashless budget method, the cashless envelope method. You are using a spending tracker in place of your cash envelopes. So usually when you spend cash, you write down your cash spending and you always have an updated balance of how much you have to spend in that category. And you have the physical cash to show that to you. To keep you accountable with your spending limits with cashless categories, you would use just a spending tracker. And that's what this looks like in my life. So we have my budget created. I stuffed my cash envelopes for my budget, which you can see these are my spending envelopes for my budget. And now we stuffed my sinking funds as well. Now I will link everything that you see in this video down in the description of this video. If you want to know more about sinking funds, I'll also put that in the description of this video. So make sure you check out that. So that is my February budget. That's how I create my paycheck budget every single time I get paid. Now I know it seems like a lot of different steps, but eventually you work this into a daily routine that takes about 10 to 15 minutes a day. Now I probably spend about 10 minutes a day tracking my spending, working on my budget. The great thing here, it's all about planning ahead and working along that system as you go. So for example, I might start creating and writing down bits and pieces of my February budget, say in the middle of January. That way, as I get closer to that paycheck, I have, I have a lot of those steps already written down and ready to go. So tackle it, I like to tackle it in bite-side chunks as I go throughout the month to prepare for my months in advance. I also think it's really important to mention creating a realistic budget does not mean that you do all of that hard work when you're creating it. In fact, a lot of that work should be done before you even sit down to write numbers down on a piece of paper for your budget, knowing your financial priorities, and that pertains to debt and savings, figuring out your fixed expenses, your variable spending, your budget category, your budget limits. All of that is determined and something that will really help with that process is tracking your spending. A budget is created based on not what we want to spend, but on what we are actually spent spending. And that's a foundation for where you need to start your budget paychecks in the future. If you found this video helpful, please like it and don't forget to subscribe for the previous month. Okay, yeah, this isn't gonna work. Okay, all right, all right, come on. Oh! You and your angry face, get out of here. Go, go.